Pandemic has been altering our lives for more than seven months now. And while we all know to wear our masks and social distance, it certainly still can be hard sometimes. Dr. Laura Saunders is a psychologist at the Institute of Living at Hartford Hospital. We're talking today about social distancing fatigue. Doctor, just what we need, one more fatigue in our lives. Welcome to Better Connecticut. So what is it? So uh, thank you, Karen and Joe, for having me. So what we're talking about today is social distancing fatigue. And social dis distancing fatigue, um, and actually I generally say physical distancing. I don't focus so much on the social part because we're social beings and we definitely need to socialize. But it's a fatigue based on the guidelines, having to wear masks, having to create social distance, reduce the kinds of events that you might previously go to, dinner parties, if you're a child, you mean all the, uh, missing all the child events, and many of the limitations around, you know, being outside and being in, in certain size groups and going out to eat. So it's a real fatigue from all these limitations that have been going on for almost eight months at this point. And you're really seeing it, especially with teens and younger people, it can be harder for them to be, keep going at this. Yes, I think that uh, children, younger children, have adapted more to some of these because they weren't really going out independently and doing things anyway. Um, but for the most part, teens and, and, you know, into older teens and young adults are struggling a lot more. They are uh, the ones that they feel are least affected by the uh, coronavirus, and they are the ones that developmentally just rebel anyway. They just want to go against what adults are telling them. So. They're the groups that are showing some of the upticks in, um, in positive COVID cases. And we think it's in part because of the social distancing fatigue. They're really getting tired and frustrated with the limitations being put on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you know, doctor, I mean, it, it's, it's hard enough for like me as an adult to, to deal with it every day. And just remember all the right things to do. So what's, what's the conversation that we should be having with our kids about how important this is and without a scolding manner and a, and a tone that they're gonna rebel against? What's, what's a good way to handle it with them? So I think what we need to do first is actually validate that this is frustrating. It's frustrating for us as adults and it's really frustrating for teens. They're missing a lot of their milestones. I mean, in the spring they were missing, you know, proms and graduations and parties and other events. So validate how hard this is. But at the same time, help them with the little perspective taking. And that's honestly something that adolescents really struggle with is taking someone else's perspective. They think that just because they're not affected doesn't mean that other people aren't affected. And what we know is that risk in these situations is cumulative. The more things we do, to prevent exposure, that accumulation builds up and keeps us safer. Um, so it's not just about protecting yourself, but protecting the people around you as well. Yeah, and you're talking about that a lot of times, I think teens anyway, their brains tend to be all or nothing, black and white. And you said it's important to let people know, especially in that age group, it's not all or nothing. There are, they don't have to go back to how they were in March, but we have to still keep being careful. Yes, and it's about emphasizing what we can do, not so much of what we cannot do. So giving um, teens the opportunity to do some sort of cohort or pod um, hangouts, which we, what a cohort or a pod is at least two or more groups of people or families that ha are following some of the um, quarantine and social distancing guidelines together. So we're not saying you need to be as isolated as we were back in March. We need to give our teens a little bit of freedom, but it needs to be within the, the guidelines because that's what keeps them safe and keeps all of us safe. And you know what I'm finding too, if there's a plus side, many of the high school athletes that I'm now interviewing, they're just saying, we don't take anything for granted anymore. We really just look forward to the moment and we don't go long term. And that's a great perspective because they're realizing that if they don't, you know, some of the athletes, the high school athletes in particular, if they don't follow the guidelines, they're not going to have any sports and they want to be able to do things. So that's where you bring in a huge motivator for a lot of those kids. Um, you know, so the more we can find ways to motiv motivate kids, give them little things to work towards and look forward to. Um, so it's emphasizing that it is hard. This is a frustrating time but we're not as limited as we were back in the spring yeah. and to emphasize the things we can do, not what we cannot do. Right, and we wanna keep that, keep the guard up because you don't want it to go get worse and then the restrictions will have to be stronger. So thank you so much for being thank with you, us, Doc. Dr. Saunders. Thank you.